Hi there friends, my name is Nicole and I'm here today with a review of Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. S I saw Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812, or Great Comet as I'm going to say for the rest of this video, last month whenever I was in New York for my spring break and my parents were really nice and bought us tickets um, actually on the stage. That's, if you don't already know, one of the most crazy things about Great Comet is that it's a very immersive experience. The actors use the entire theater. It's in the Imperial, which I saw Les Mis in three times, so it's kind of weird to be back and see it look so differently. But from my understanding, they basically gutted it and redid all the seating. Um, so there's obviously normal seating in the balcony and the orchestra, but then there's also seating all across the stage and tables in the center. And so the action kind of happens all around you, which was crazy and amazing and it was definitely the most immersive experience I've ever had. Here's my playbill. I'm going to stop holding it now. Great Comet is actually based on, I think it's about a 70 page chunk of War and Peace. I am getting War and Peace for graduation as a present because I'm going to read it, hopefully. Um, but it is about the characters of Natasha and Pierre, kind of what they're experiencing. It mostly deals with Pierre's kind of existential crises that he's going through, or ongoing crisis, and um, the infidelity in his marriage. And then it deals with Natasha, who is torn between her love for her fiancé Andre and this new, young, hot man, Anatole. Um, and it's just an incredible experience. I believe it's been described as an electro-pop opera? Uh, the music is unlike anything else. I don't want to give too much away, but there's like a rave scene in it with like glowy things and strobe lights and it is absolutely incredible. I highly, highly recommend it. So one of the coolest things about seeing it was that I was seated on stage and so you get like a very up close and personal interaction with a lot of the actors. In the beginning of the show, they give out dumplings to like quarter of the audience or they're kind of like pierogies, but in like more of a breading. Um, my sister got one. She was so excited. She said that it was delicious, but she didn't give me a single bite. So there's that. But we did get shakers. They gave out shakers to some of the audience at one point. And also during my favorite song, Letters, which opens act two, they hand out letters to some people. I also, I will not name names, um, but one of the girls in the cast at one point saw me looking at her and winked at me. And I was like, Huh. Um, but it's really cool because you feel like it's a very intimate show. Like you feel very connected to all the characters because you're so close physically to the actors. Even if you're up in the balcony, um, the actors go up there. Like Josh Groban's up in the balcony at one point, which again, you may know of the show because Josh Groban's in it. The kind of newness and the experimentalness of the show though isn't the only good thing about it. I kind of went to see it just thinking like, oh, there's so much hype around it. You know, I want to see this kind of new staging idea. But actually, I think I would love it even if it were just a traditional stage show because the music is absolutely beautiful. There's ballads like Natasha sings this song called No One Else. You can find it on iTunes um, from the off-Broadway cast album where it's sung by Philippa Sue, um, who you might know from Hamilton, or Amelie. Um, but then there's like these crazy songs like Nothing Gets Me Wrapped Up like the song The Duel, I'm going to be really honest. Um, and since doing the off-Broadway show, they've added a song in called Dust and Ashes for Pierre, which is one of my favorite songs ever. And um, the cast album does come out next month uh, in May. So definitely, definitely make sure that you check that out. You can pre-order it right now and you get the prologue for free. Now, or not for free, but like you get it now. Um, and I can't wait to actually have the uh, cast recording with Josh Groban and the rest of the cast that I saw. Leading into that, I'd like to talk about Josh Groban. I will admit, I resisted being a Josh Groban fan for years. Um, and then I saw Great Comet and now I'm a fangirl. I am truly fulfilling my destiny as the mom friend. Um, but Josh is an incredible actor. It's funny because you almost don't recognize him when you first see him because he wears like, you know, a padded suit to make him look heavier and he's got this big beard that he's grown. and. He is just an incredible actor. He acts Pierre so well. He really brings across this really intricate and complex portrayal of depression, which I don't think you see that often in a musical particularly, um, especially done this well. It's it's a beautiful story that he's telling of, of the character of Pierre. Um, obviously, his singing is beautiful. He is wonderful. He does stage door. I went to stage door not thinking Josh Groban would come out, and then he walked out, and I was completely taken aback, and he was very, very kind. Um, he's just great. Also, he tweeted me back, and now I still have a bunch of moms following me and welcoming to me to the Josh Groban fan club. <laughs> I felt so, so blessed to see, I believe it's Danae Benton, is how you say her name, as Natasha. She is 
absolutely incredible. She portrays Natasha so well. Natasha is a character that I really, really love. Um, kind of an ingenue type character, a little bit almost um, Cosette-ish, I would say, but like in the best, Cosette's my favorite character, so like that carries the highest of connotations. Um, but she really portrayed her struggle and her anguish um, over these two men in her life and over her relationship with her cousin, Sonia, um, so, so well. Obviously her voice is incredible. I can't wait to get my hands on the cast album with her on it. I also have to give a big shout out. We actually didn't get to see Lucas Steele as Anatole, but we saw his understudy, Blaine Krauss, I believe is his name, and Blaine was magnificent. Um, my sister is actually like really salty that he's not on the cast album, even though we both like Lucas Steele as well. But Blaine was so, 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 so good. Um, his Anatole was, the charisma that he had on stage was actually insane. I also have to say that I have the utmost respect for all of the understudies and swings in this cast. Obviously I respect understudies and swings in any cast. But in this one, where you're not on a traditional stage and there's so much to remember blocking wise, and if you take a wrong step, you know, if you normally in your ensemble track step left and you need to be stepping right in your um, role that you're understudying, you could fall off the stage if you don't do the right thing very easily. Um, I actually do think I saw Blaine trip at one point and I was like, please don't go down off the stage. Um, but no, I can't believe how wonderful Blaine was such a good Anatole, would love to see him get moved up to play the lead when Lucas Steele eventually leaves the cast. Also, for those of you who might be going to see it in July, I believe it is, uh, The Oak, who you may know from Hamilton as Hercules Mulligan and James Madison, is joining the show whenever Josh Groban leaves it and will be playing Pierre. I really want to go back. If I am in New York this summer, I definitely will go see The Oak as Pierre because I think that he is going to kill it as much as I am sad that we are losing Josh Groban to this production. I also am really hopeful that Great Comet will do well at the Tonys this year. They're obviously um, eligible for Best Musical, Best Actress, Best Actor, um, Featured Actor, Feature Actress, and I really, really hope to see some people get nominations. I was very excited um, the day that I was filming this, which is Wednesday. Uh, the Drama League uh, Award nominations came out and Great Comet was nominated for Best New Musical, and Josh and Danae both got nominations for Distinguished Performance. So, hoping to see that translate over into more awards. So, like I've already said, if you have a chance to go see it, I would highly... This is a problem. Um, I would highly recommend going to see the show if you are in New York. I also would recommend buying the off Broadway cast album, which is, um, you can also listen to it on Spotify right now. It has Dave Malloy, who wrote the show and the music and everything for it as Pierre, which is really great. If you're in New York uh, next month, I believe he's coming back for a couple of weeks while Josh Groban is gone on uh, some sort of vacation. I forget exactly the reasons why. Um, also, if you're not in New York though, if you wanna buy the cast album, you can also buy uh, the Great Comet of 1812, The Journey of a New Musical to Broadway, which I got for Christmas and now I'm even more excited to read it because I've seen the show. It's gorgeous. It talks about, you know, how a show goes from um, conception to being on Broadway. It has some gorgeous, gorgeous, lovely shots in it. Um, also has in the back the script and uh, has some notation on it too, which is really exciting and I really can't wait to read this part of it. Kind of like the Hamilton book, um, if you're familiar with that, you know, a bunch of information about writing it and then the actual script in the back with notes on it. So would also highly recommend this. I believe it's $40, but um, I know mine was on sale at Barnes & Noble, but do get your hands on this. It also has a CD in the back with, I believe it's, yeah, five of the songs from it, so highly recommend that. I just realized that this has Dust and Ashes on it, which is not on the album that I currently have. Okay, gonna stick this in my computer. I hope that you guys enjoyed this review. If you'd like to see more reviews on this channel, do let me know. I would love to do some more reviews. I have more reviews to write of the other shows that I saw. Um, also, I was thinking about maybe doing some cast album reviews, so let me know what you think of that. Again, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel if you're new. And leave me a comment. Let me know if you've seen Great Comet or if you've listened to it or if you want to go see it because it's obviously one of my favorite things to talk about right now. I think I'm driving everyone insane. But otherwise, I'll see you again next week. Bye. Uh, in 19th century Russia, we write letters, we write letters.
need to put this somewhere. Let's 